It was during this era that a building was constructed on South Street that reflects the past, present, and future identity of the Paramore area, the Wellsville Hotel. The Wells-built hotel and the adjacent South Street Casino became the centerpiece of a community that had been established for more than 40 years. African-American homes were built in the Paramore area as early as 1886. Historic buildings still standing in Orlando's African-American community include the Gabriel Jones House on Terry Street, built in 1907, and the Crooms House on Washington Street, built in 1905. With the end of World War I in 1919, America entered a period of unprecedented economic prosperity. The feeling that anything was possible led to growth and expansion in cities and towns throughout the country. This optimistic attitude led to a real estate boom in Florida, and it was during the 1920s that Orlando experienced a second period of intense growth. The local African-American community shared the prevailing hope for the future. The Hill Tillingist House on Washington Street, constructed in the early 1920s, was a meeting place for notable African Americans such as educator Mary McLeod Bethune and aviator Bessie Coleman. Jones High School opened on Paramore Avenue in 1921 as one of the only black educational institutions in Central Florida. Today the building houses the Callahan Community Center. The old Mount Pleasant Church on South Paramore Street, built in 1919, was the first African-American church in Orlando to be constructed using stone. By the early 1930s, two buildings became a focal point of Orlando's African-American community, the Wellsville Hotel and the adjacent South Street Casino. Important historical figures such as former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall and baseball great Roy Campanella were guests at the Wellsville Hotel. Musicians who are legendary now, such as B.B. King, Ray Charles, and Ella Fitzgerald, also stayed at the Wellsville and performed next door at the South Street Casino long before they were famous. For many prominent African Americans, the road to success went through Orlando's Paramore community. We started in 1992, and our objective is to research, to document, and to highlight the rich heritage of people of African ancestry. Uh, we realize that African American history is part of America's history, and for too long that story hasn't been told. So our mission is to tell the story and to complete the picture. During the first half of the 20th century, racial segregation was the norm throughout the southern United States, and the city of Orlando was no different. There were whites-only water fountains, separate entrances to theaters, and limited access to restaurants and businesses for African Americans. Before the civil rights laws of the 1960s put an end to racial segregation, any African American who wanted to stay in downtown Orlando had to check in here at the Wellsville Hotel. Construction began on the Wellsville Hotel in 1929 and the South Street Casino was built in the early 1930s. The man who built the Wellsville Hotel was Dr. William Monroe Wells, a prominent member of Orlando's African American community. It has been estimated that Dr. Wells delivered about half of the African American babies born in Orlando in the 1950s and 60s. In addition to providing health care to local residents, Dr. Wells was concerned with the social and cultural life of Orlando's African-American community. Yes, I uh, helped deliver, uh, I don't know how many babies, but most of the black babies were delivered in Orlando by Dr. W. M. Wells. And I did assist him, and we were very fortunate by the help of God because we didn't lose many of our babies. We were very successful uh, in delivering the babies. We delivered all times of day and sometimes late at night, all times. The babies, which I did enjoy, we didn't lose many of our mothers either. To know that you have bringing someone into the world is a good feeling. 
this is what we could call the, 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 the really the, the cutting edge of, of historic preservation because if, without this kind of work, we lose the house. This was the heart of the African-American community. There were four physicians uh, in this area, uh, two dentists, and where we're located really represented the, the top of the economic uh, circle as well as the social circle. Uh, Dr. Wells lived here. Uh, Dr. Wells' efforts were toward improvement, but he focused more on economics as well as providing this home uh, for people like Jackie Robinson and other prominent African Americans when they came here. Uh, this is the most passionate project of my legislative career. Uh, I was a paper boy for three years in front of the Wells Bill. I threw the Orlando Sentinel, and uh, I believe in historic preservation. Uh, I'm an educator. And when you look around this community, you see devastation. This was a photographer's house. This was a physician's house. We have no physicians, no photographers, no policemen in the area. So for me, historic preservation uh, is as passionate a subject as football was uh, when I was in high school and college and as politics today. Historic preservation is a way to hand off that baton to another generation of black and white children to say, before the magic created the magic in Orlando. There was a period of segregation, and there was a period when black and white people couldn't talk, walk, or live together, and there was a period when opportunities were sparse, significantly less than today. And so for that reason, we shall not, we cannot, we must not lose the memories of what this neighborhood was about. And so for that reason, uh, I say let us continue. The Wells Bill Hotel and South Street Casino next door did more than serve the African-American tourists in Orlando. They served as a community gathering place where people would come together to celebrate important events in their lives. People celebrated their birthdays uh, at the South Street Casino. Uh, there were teas that were held there, celebrations of graduations, weddings. So it was uh, very much a, a, a community center, things that you would hold in other facilities today, that was the venue at that time in the African American community. Many of the visitors to the Wells Built Hotel were prominent African American musicians who performed next door at the South Street Casino. Thank you, folks. Saxman Noble Thin Man Watts and drummer Panama Francis are both Florida born musicians who became successful in New York before returning to Orlando. Both men were frequent performers at the South Street Casino early in their careers. I remember playing there, but it was always a big thing when we played the casino. We thought that was a big thing. It was a big, big, big hall, big stage. And if I'm not mistaken, they had ba a basketball uh, court in there. And all of and the tanners used to come out of the north. That's where they would put them. I played there after I left Florida, after I got gone and went to New York, uh, come back to, to on tour down here. We played the South Street Casino with Lionel Hampton band. So all the name bands used to, that's where they would put them into the casino. And that place was so hot until, I mean, the perspiration was all down in my shoe. I could, I could hear when I walked and hear the squish, squish, squish of the water, you know, that was in there, because, you know, there was no air conditioning, nothing like that, and it'd be packed. It'd be packed because, I mean, back then, you know, there was no uh, radio and, and TV and all that, so what happened, uh, 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 if the dance was, say, start at 9 o'clock, they let all of the people in for free to listen to the band. And you play about a half an hour of uh, music, and, and all of the good dancers would be standing around who, you know, who were the critics. And... Uh, if they give the nod that uh, yeah, you know, the band is all right, they're all right. They let all the people out. And then 
they had to pay to come in and head back. Following the end of racial segregation in the 1960s, African Americans who came to Orlando could legally stay in any hotel they chose to. In the 1970s and 80s, the Wellsbilt Hotel and South Street Casino were neglected and eventually abandoned. The South Street Casino was torn down in 1987, and a long list of building code violations threatened the Wellsbilt Hotel with destruction as well. A challenge also is to, other than finding someone, and probably that's the first challenge, like the Trust for Public Land, who's willing to come in and take on a project like this. That um, to restore a building that has a negative value. <laughs> there are not too many people that are willing to do that, or too many entities. The property was valued at something uh, in the range of $150,000 um, back three years ago. That was the appraised value of the property. Uh, obviously, most of that value, or maybe not obviously, but most of that value was in the land, because in the appraiser's mind, the building was a negative value. The, the value of the building was the cost to tear it down. Uh, because in the appraiser's mind, there was, uh, it had no positive value, only a negative value. Um, that's why it was particularly important that an entity like the Trust for Public Land come in and purchase a building like this that, that had, on paper, only a negative value, and to save it rather than demolishing it. Um, and one of, one of the challenges is to um, basically, uh, again, uh, try to... Um, uh, preserve the existing as much as possible, but at the same point, we need to go back and make the building structurally sound. So right now we're currently inside uh, showing up the, uh, the second floor, putting some temporary showing in, and we're getting ready to re rebuild some uh, bearing walls that have deteriorated o o over time. I think that uh, for the most part the building uh, carries uh, a lot of historical uh, significance, um, especially to the African American Museum here. And for me, as, a, uh, as an African American contractor, I'm extremely proud to have, to have the opportunity to work on a, work on a project. We want to uh, show that people had multi-dimensional lives and interests, and we're going to have history in general. What kind of work did African Americans do when they first came here? So obviously, we're going to have some information about the citrus industry. We're going to have um, information about people who were laundresses who took in uh, laundry. This is what their lives were like. We're also going to focus on the middle class, the professionals, the physicians like uh, Dr. Wells. And then what kinds of things did they do for recreation? And the Wells built was a big part of that. In recent decades, jazz and blues have been overshadowed by rap and other forms of popular music. Exhibitions at the Wells Built Museum of African American History will introduce many young people to music they have never heard before. It's hoped that the Wells Built Museum of African American History will foster a sense of pride in the Paramore neighborhood, particularly among young people, and therefore help to fight problems faced by the community, such as crime and drug abuse. The museum will also increase awareness of the important cultural contributions of African American people among people of other races, encouraging mutual respect and understanding. The Wells Built Museum may even lead to the economic rejuvenation of Southwest Orlando in the future, a fitting legacy for an institution that has meant so much to the area's past. I'm Ben Brokemarkle.